Hi everyone and welcome back. It's my last free day off. So it's Friday today, the Friday after Easter Sunday. Um, I was so, so pleased with the triumph yesterday. So pleased with that. Um, it, it idled and the uh, quarter throttle was absolutely fine. It wasn't spitting, it sounded great. Uh, for anyone wondering, Rick Rick had already told me about upjetting. Um, it's not that I, I ignored Rick or anyone. It's that I just I wanted to stop spending on the bike until I knew it was an okay engine. Um, because basically, up until now, what we've done is we've bought everything we felt we needed. So we needed we had Makunis on there originally. We switched to. Um, Amals, we then got them professionally cleaned, that cost like 200 quid. We then got Wassals, that cost another 200 quid or, or 300 quid. We just kept throwing money into it, and what I wanted was just to see that it was okay overall as, a, as an engine before doing too much. But long story short, it, it's a 200 main jet at the moment, it should be a 240, and it will need some sort of filter. I'm looking at a pancake filter for here. I think that would work really well. If uh, Rick or anyone else who's watching has any experience with these bikes, um, I'd be curious as to what your thoughts are on the pancake filter. Um, it seems to be okay when you look into it online. It seems to be not an issue. So, But is, is there anything I'm missing with a pancake filter? There, are, there is no other options really. We could put the Velocity stack back on, but there's no mesh in there. We can get a Velocity stack with mesh. But I just like an engine to have a bit of air restriction. I, I feel like they always run a little bit better when they have got a bit of restriction. So basically in a few days time, we're gonna have the right main jet in here. I'll give it a quick clean the carb just because it, um, it's been sitting a few months. And the other thing I didn't have is the, I haven't got gaskets for here. So I, I made gasket out of the sealer. You can see it actually, look. So I made gasket um, out of a gasket sealer, an oil and fuel resistant one. But it'd be nice to have real gasket in there. And in here I used an O-ring, but it, I'm not sure how well it sat. I'd prefer a gasket in here as well instead of the O-ring, or maybe even a mixture of both. But that's where we are with this bike. So it needs a 140 main, which I've now ordered. It needs some sort of filter. And, uh, and the timing done, which I'll be um, winging it. I mean, I've seen it done. And I've watched it recently online, so I'm sure it will be okay. But, um, yeah, don't know. Uh, today, my task. Danny was here the other day. You know, the one who I never capture on the channel. And um, I was telling him about buying the new wheels at 250 quid for the full set and then having spoke them. And he basically said, in a, in a, in a slightly politer way, stop being lazy. Um, he said, your spokes here are rock solid, which they are. Um, and he said, you can clean these up. And then I kind of tried to prove to him that they, they're not easy to clean up. And I got some sandpaper on here. And actually, when I finished putting a bit of sandpaper on there, it came up okay. And then I was checking with John, and John said, these weren't, they're not going to be chrome. They're not going to look chrome. They were kind of anodized. So cleaning them up, they'll be metal color. And that's kind of okay. So my thought is today to get the Dremel out with some sort of cleaning attachment or, or um, sandpaper attachment and to go over all of these spokes and see if we can get them looking a bit better. Now ideally in the long run I'd get new wheels anyway because these have pitted but for now we can get them looking a little bit nicer because we have you know we have the tools here. So uh, yeah that's the current plan. I think it's quite intricate it's going to take a while you've got to kind of work it all out but I think we'll do an okay job, really. And then I've ordered a 2K clear. I want to do a couple of things tomorrow. I want to clear the front mud guard. I want to clear. I want to clear this. I want to give it another dusting coat first, and then clear it. I think I'm going to take the paint up to here. So I'm going to scuff the chrome, take the paint up to there, just for convenience. And I want to paint the caliper and clear it as well it just kind of lets down the look because it's a bit a bit rough uh, so paint this as well and clear and, and and it's the good clear coat so it's real good solid stuff it's the stuff you mix in the can first um, I've ordered the 
extensions here for to go behind here on the, and have an air filter on it so i've ordered that that should be okay uh what else handlebars are not on order yet because I'm, I'm spending all my funds um so they're not on order yet but i have found a set that will work for this bike i have no doubt uh and they could come in black so i can get them blacked already yes yeah, so we're making lots of progress with these long-term bikes which is great So it's going to take a hell of a lot of work to bring them up. You can see the odd one shining through and that was with a, a sand disc. Um, also any bits that cross over like here you can't get to. So I don't know, I might try some sort of de-rusting product but I don't want a converter, I want a rust remover. I might have to try that. Uh, Otherwise, I'm not sure it probably would be new wheels because it, it's a lot of work. It's it's a uh, it's a lot of work, you know, and it, it can take ages. Ah, but at least we tried. Right, let's get these bikes in because it's of course it's starting to rain. But I think I'll get the front caliper painted so that I can get it cleared in a couple of days. And what else was I meant to do? The front caliper top of the forks well let's have a look so there's the outside of the mechanism the insides here the insides actually not too bad I mean I will I will dust it I will dust it um, and clear coat it for longevity but actually it's not too bad this is the bit you see it's tempting to leave that alone actually uh, let's see so we only see this side Mm, I'll see. I think it's okay. I uh, can't get this off. I don't know. It does come off, but um, it's a bit stiff, so it's not going to come off for me. Otherwise, I would have given it a summer, uh, probably a silver coat, which I've got. But light dusting, if you're using a good 2K K clear, you don't need to worry too much about deep coats here, especially in matte. A few light dustings, one thick coat that's not running. And then I'll let it sit for a couple of days before clear coating it with the good stuff, the 2K. So my aim will be for one day to have a nice warm day where I'm clear coating the forks, uh, that, the brake stuff. Uh, what else was I meant to be coating? I feel like there was loads more. Um, I guess that's kind of it. But yeah, all of that, any of that that I need to do, I'll do it all in one hit. So not much filming going on, but um, this is kind of what I've been doing this week. Half an hour, an hour here, bits and pieces done. All the parts down here have been painted. Mud guard, the caliper, and we'll dry over the next day or two. And um, before the clear coat goes on, I bought uh, my mum's hair dryer up just to help the process along. Basically, it just helps it get to a touch, to you know, to its touch ready, so I can move it. But um, yeah, otherwise it dries naturally over the, the next week or so. So, uh, yeah, you know, everything is is coming together. Yeah. So, deja vu. We're off to get an MOT two weeks later. Just check everything before you get there because it's really annoying uh, when, when something goes wrong. Rear brake, front brake, 
that's it just have a little look at the shop do they need a white i mean i put wd-40 on them which isn't going to help but and i didn't need to it wasn't the problem was it so it might get an advisory on uh, foul uh, seal, seals but it won't be a real one because I know what I did it was dry as anything down there um, and actually a, a little bit of WD isn't the end of the world anyway um, what I am going to do is bring the spare battery and the leads and the rag just in case this battery although this battery has been starting up first press for two weeks um, so yeah but I'm going to bring them just for good practice in here so we're back for the MOT I believe it passed I don't even check anymore but let's see if there's any advisories on rare occasions they do put advisories Dylan's bike last week got a um, an advisory for his loud exhaust which is um, rare for my bikes my bike I mean I wasn't with him though I just sent him so they wouldn't have known it was one of mine uh, okay Pass no advisories. You know what? Absolutely spot on. Uh, so, so they do give advisories. They have given me advisories in the past, but they're such a good garage. They're so honest and genuine. If if you 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 your light went out on the way to them or something, they'd say, Charlie, your indicator light's not working, but get it done, and they'd pass it. If you know on rare occasions, obviously if it was anything unsafe they don't they send me away um, and they've done that a couple of times normally for shocks or something but great bike the new speedo drive may arrive today it'd be so handy if it does uh because i can get this advertised and up and ready which i you know really i want to do so i'm going to polish this up a bit hope the speedo drive arrives get the adverts up try and get it out the door um just because we need to really uh, I've got a hit on the Harley. I've got someone interested in the Harley. They would be coming from a very long way, Leeds or somewhere. So they want a couple of videos off the Harley today. So I'm going to pull that thing out, throw a rag over it, and get a couple of um, videos of it. <laughs> 